Boomer Stadium in Schaumburg is a little more than 30 miles away from both U.S. Cellular Field and Wrigley Field. And on a sunny day in late April, dozens of guys from all across the country come to this suburb for a one-day tryout with the Schaumburg Boomers. A one-day chance at the possibility of making a team in the independent Frontier League, a league that might as well be a million miles away from the majors. I really love baseball. It's a passion of mine. You know, I played it for a while. I was pretty good at it. Um, I think I can still play, so I want to keep playing, obviously. And if this gives me the opportunity, I'm going to keep playing. An unyielding love of the game is part of what brings these guys to Schaumburg. But there's more than that. Obviously, the goal here is to get back to affiliated ball or to affiliated ball for the first time. You know, a lot of the guys in Frontier League have played affiliated ball and, you know, get released and uh, want to keep playing and try to get picked back up. And for some guys, it's a uh, first, first dose of pro ball. And, uh, you know, their, their hopes are obviously to get to the big leagues as well. For almost everyone, the Frontier League offers the one thing that, as the old cliche goes, every athlete wants, a chance. For Brantz Rivera, it's a second chance. I was playing down at Texas Christian University, and uh, a week before my senior season, I um, tore my hip flexor and had to sit out a little bit for that, try to come back my senior season and didn't have the greatest year. Had really good years my sophomore and junior year. Uh, so yeah, I was talking to some teams, uh, you know, but then the senior, senior season didn't go as planned and uh, didn't get drafted. And as of now, that was the end of my baseball career. Rivera hit 325 in 2011, his junior year, and was a first-team All-Mountain West Conference selection. Some draft experts considered him to be one of the top college outfielders in the country going into the draft that year. Even though he wasn't selected, he was considered to be a shoe-in for 2012. And then there was the injury. Playing professional baseball is every little kid's dream, you know, from growing up. And uh, in my mind, I thought it was a for-sure thing. Um, especially with the years I had. Um, but you know, the, the way that the Lord works, he, he taught me a lot through it and I'm, and I'm so grateful for what I've learned. I wouldn't change anything for the world. For everyone, the Frontier League is one step closer to making their dreams come true. One step closer to being discovered by a scout like the Chicago White Sox, Del Matthews. They'll go um, to these independent ball clubs because they want to further their career and, and some of them uh, do really, really well and, and end up getting picked up. For some, it's a second chance. For others, it's the first chance. But for everyone, it's a chance. One step closer to the big leagues. I mean, that's, that's more of a, of a rarity uh, where you see somebody that, that signed out of an independent ball uh, team and, and make it all the way to the big leagues. It does happen. But uh, you never know. I've seen guys playing independent ball for seven years and get picked up for the first time. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Since 1996, 25 guys from the Frontier League went on to play in the majors. Four guys, Joe Thatcher, Tanner Rourke, Vidal Nuno, and Steve Delabar, all played in the Frontier League and are now in the majors. In fact, Steve Delabar was an all-star last year. It's rare, sure, but it's happened. Actually, one of my motiv motivators for even doing this was one of my friends I played with, Matt Carpenter. He's uh, playing third base for the Cardinals now, and he was a fifth-year senior out of TCU, you know, got drafted. I think he was 23, 24. I don't know when he got drafted. He was old. But, uh, you know, in, and he's there. He, he made it. You know, his work ethic was unreal. Um, so seeing, you know, guys like that that I've personally played with that, that can do it, you know, helps motivate me. But that is what can make baseball so cruel. It's a deceptive game. It's a game of failure. A game where a hitter who fails seven out of 10 times is a star. It's a game of numbers. And for the guys at the tryout, the big number is 22. The maximum number of players on the active roster for a team in the Frontier League. You know, it's tough. And a lot of it's gonna depend on numbers, you know, how many guys show up. But, uh, you know, we usually, we work hard to get everybody a good, fair look. And, uh, you know, they'll get several swings, they get to run, they get to field. Uh, we'll have a little bit of live action in the afternoon, also some live pitching. and. Uh, We'll give everybody a fair look, and uh, you know, it, it's tough. One day is nothing in baseball. It can take hundreds of at-bats over the course of a month to properly assess a guy. These guys won't get that. They get one day. 
Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, they know guys haven't been able to really get outside unless you're coming from a warm weather state, you know, so that, but also because the season, I guess, for them is approaching so quickly. You know, you don't see live pitching for a while and, and hitting a, a baseball with a bat, I think, is one of the hardest things to do in all the sports. So uh, it's not like you can just come in and pick it up. I'm sure some guys can, and those guys are probably in the MLB right now. <laughs> Two million kids play Little League Baseball in the United States. Less than 500,000 go on to play baseball into their senior year in high school. 54,000 of them will go on to play in college. There are 8,000 roster spots in affiliated baseball, including the majors. If you include the independent leagues, like the Frontier League, there's a little less than 9,500 roster spots in all of professional baseball. That's the top 1.78%. They went, I guess they're probably taking who's quickly to be in game ready, you know, because you obviously got some guys who I think everybody out here shows some, you know, some promise in terms of being able to play. But I think they just kind of have an idea of what they're probably looking for. And then whoever comes out and is the closest to that is probably going to be asked to stay. And yet, baseball inspires hope. I'm going to go back, um, back to Chicago, keep training, keep working hard, you know, and uh, focus on some things I know I could have done better, you know, and try to get some work in between then and then definitely head to the next round. You know, when I played in the Frontier League, I'd played affiliated ball for several years. And just using myself for example, you know, it's the same way for a lot of people. But, you know, you could have told me the first day I started independent ball, I wasn't going to get picked back up in affiliated ball, and I, I would have played anyway. And I don't want to be 40, 50 years old looking back saying, man, what if? I just love the sport of baseball. It's, I love being around it. Uh, and while I still got some talent left in these bones, we'll, we'll keep trying. <laughs> it is a cold and cruel game indifferent to the people who play it. No one here eventually makes the team. They all fall just outside of that top 1.78%. But there's an undying love of the game. For everyone at this tryout, baseball is a game that is very easy to love and very hard to leave.